First, let me introduce myself. My name is Martin Kraft. I'm a German Wikipedian and uh, I'm a designer by profession. So I'm very much into this, what Gordon showed to us here. And it's good to have that in front of uh, my talk because you all now have a rough idea about which technical complexity we are talking about and about the opportunities this offers to us. My talk is about more uh, meter point of view of what infographics in Wikipedia can be about, what are the problems, the challenges, and of course the prospects. Uh, what Gordon showed was more about the prospects, especially when it comes to animation and interactive infographics. Um, the status quo is a lot worse, especially when it comes to embedding the uh, graphics into the websites and the ex acceptance of the graphics in our project. So, uh, we do have some infographics, some is not really true because uh, they are a lot, but compared to the rest of the project, we only have few infographics in Wikipedia. So, if you look at uh, any other dictionary or um, encyclopedia, you often have these highly illustrated ones. They are more infographically illustrated than Wikipedia is. In Wikipedia, it's most times the way, oh, we have an article about something and we need something to illustrate it. So pictures have not the role to carry information, but just to support the information carried in the article. I think this is, um, yeah, it could be better if we take the power images give to us, especially graphics give to us, to carry information actually, to, to communicate with the user. It's because in many cases, uh, the information gets more and more understandable, the more visual it is. We live in a really visual age, and uh, especially, uh, also you don't see that on uh, Wikipedia uh, GUI, um, the, the web has evolved, and uh, what is uh, shared on the web is often very, very visual. So uh, people share videos, people share infographics, etc. Um, that's for me the reason to do this talk, to motivate you to get into this issue of infographics and even if you aren't a designer or a grafficker or a photographer yourself, uh, to, to uh, work with others on these graphics to make Wikipedia more visual. Um, the reason to do that is that we use a visual medium and we should do deliver visual content for a visual medium, that, because that's what people expect nowadays. Uh, if you look at the Google search, for example, you always get images along with uh, the term you're searching for. And many people who come to our articles and read our content, they come via Google and they have seen, often they have seen images that are not even from Wikipedia because we don't have some kinds of content. Uh, photo-wise, but also infographic and video-wise. Um, this content is for many users more readable, especially when it comes to technical issues that are really hard to understand when they are written down. So there's a machine doing that that way. Just remember the, the clock thing uh, Gordon showed us. Describe that in about three sentences. It's impossible. But if you do that as a graphic, it's understandable for almost everybody. And last but not least, uh, graphics are sh uh, have a shareability, so they can be shared throughout the web, and this promotes our content, and this actually keeps our project going, because uh, for me it's uh, really important to uh, get as many people as possible onto our platforms, that they are not just delivering content to all the aggregators like Google and Facebook, but that we keep the people coming to Wikipedia and then eventually becoming editors themselves. And the best way to do so is to deliver content which is unique to our platform, which uh, can be shared, but which uh, is best delivered in our environment. And at the moment, we don't have the technical uh, surrounding to do so, but that should be the way uh, we uh, want to go with our project. So, we do need more infographics, and um, that's, yeah, that's the goal of my talk. <laughs> I'm finished now. Um, and um, 
to, to, to reach this goal, it's not that easy than it is with we do need more content about this or that. Because there are some problems linked to infographics. Going back a bit is that infographic, doing infographics is a tough job. There's nothing compared to, let's say, photography. Of course, photography is complicated also, but taking a photo, uh, even with um, doing the image editing afterwards, will take you, when it's really complicated, about half a day. Making a good map of something or an infographic of something can take you up to a month. Yeah, so it takes a lot more time. That's the reason why my uh, personal outcome of infographics is that small, and I'm from the business. Um, the reason for that is uh, I'm doing that in my spare time. Uh, I'm doing that for profession, but when I do that for profession, that's what I'm doing all the day when I come home from work late in the evening. It's not that I want to go on doing this. Uh, therefore, I take the easier way. I just do some photos. Um, but, of course, I always wanted to change that, uh, but it's time-consuming. And the reason why it's time-consuming is uh, because you need technical skills to do so, and you need, um, and therefore, there are very little uh, Wikipedia editors actually doing infographics. The technical skills is writing SVG, for example, or um, editing with uh, Illustrator or GIMP or whatever graphic program you're working with. Um, you have to learn that. That's not something everybody can do. It's quite easy to get into Wikipedia and uh, start to edit an article. Of course, it's too complicated for many people, but it's a lot easier than starting to make infographics for uh, Wikipedia. So you have to have that technical skills and uh, having these technical skills, you have to get along with the Wikimedia software, which is not that easy when it comes to infographics. The easiest way is you have just plain images and SVGs who don't do anything, but as soon as it gets in the direction Gordon was pointing out to us, it gets really complicated because you are constantly working around things the browser doesn't support, the media wiki software doesn't support, etc. The other point is you have content issues. Doing infographics is not just about doing some picture. You are actually delivering content, and therefore uh, we, should be, um, really, we should really care about the content we are delivering with the infographic. It's not just do some diagram about this or that. This diagram has a database, and you need to uh, know where to get this data from, that it's comparable, that it's valid. Actually, we do need something like cita citation needed for infographics. We don't have that yet. Infographics uh, are more like an article than like a photo. Infographics have a background, a source. When, when you have people drawing maps, they often use a lot more sources than a usual article because they, they need the information. Where is that? What is this structure like, etc. But we don't, have, we don't have even a template for uh, adding sources to commons images, I think. And uh, there we have to enhance uh, our, yeah, our system to do so. The other point is, um, oh, that's inside there. The other point is that having the content once, there's not the plain way, uh, the straight way you can move forward getting to a visualization. Visualization is always deciding, and you can disagree about uh, the ways infographics are. For example, uh, I built this as an SVG using JavaScript, so it's not possible to do that on Commons, sorry. Um, and it just shows what a small bar chart, pie chart, whatever chart, can make a difference in the appearance of the same value. These are like percentage values, 50%. So each of the circles has the exact same size of the red circles. Some of you might say, hey, that circle on the right is way bigger than the others. No, it isn't. It is exactly the same size. So it's mathematically precise. These are just 
alternatives of showing the same type of data. And uh, this results in, in totally uh, uncommon behavior, especially when it comes to the uh, diagram on the right side. Is this the wrong diagram? It is not, because it's mathematically correct, but it can't be used for any purpose. Sometimes it makes sense to use a diagram like this one, especially when it comes to uh, uh, figures we tend to uh, recognize on a logarithmic scale. Our, um, yet the way we recognize the world around us is not only always linear. So there, for us, it's a huge difference if we are in a group of, let's say, two, and there's a group of, let's say, 15, then there is a bit difference uh, from the group of 15 to the group of 50. Yeah? So we, we tend to, uh, to recognize things logarithmically. Therefore, we had to decide which of these ways to choose. And that's a content issue. That's something we need to discuss about on a, on a content base. The next thing is, oh, that's the result of that. <laughs> the only um, infographics you can trust are those who falsified yourself. It, it's, it's the same thing like statistics. Infographics is as complicated as statistics is because they are highly linked to each other. And uh, therefore, we should be really careful in trying to have this neutral point of view in our infographics. It's, we don't have processes for that. We, we somehow have to sort that out. And the next thing is about collaboration issues. Uh, in Wikipedia, we are quite good on working together with articles, but we are not good in working together on images and infographics. Most times, when it comes to graphics and photos, there's a single person doing the job, and maybe there are other persons delivering him the content. But this doesn't always work, especially when it comes to translations of infographics, etc. You need more people uh, being able to work on the same code base. And here we also have a lack of tools to do so. Especially we only have this, there's a file with description thing on comments. We don't have a possibility to, to load up source files. A lot of people, some do SVGs with code, some do SVGs with Illustrator or whatever. But the only thing we can upload is SVG. And that's not really the best source to work on with, always. Sometimes it is. Um, so collaboration issues. And of course, there are social issues in collaboration as well. Here an example of uh, the first infographic I'm, I was trying to, uh, to enhance when I went to Wikipedia. It's a map of the German TV stations, the public TV stations. And it was like it was on the right side. So, colored, and um, I find this confusing, all the logos, different sizes, and the colors, where they, where they come from. And uh, being a designer, I try to put this into uh, the corporate design of the main TV station company, of the public TV service in Germany, which is about that in the middle. And I got a fight of almost one and a half months with uh, the people who were defending that one but for any reason. Yeah? So um, when it comes to, uh, to graphics, there's often a, a kind of irrational, not, not really um, describable sense. I prefer that because it's nice colors. That's not really a reason. Yeah? We have to be reasonable and we have to learn that it's not somebody else destroying our artwork, but it's constantly enhancing like we do in other parts in, of our work. And of course, we do have design issues, uh, special design issue uh, when it comes to, to colors. There are reasons for infographics. Um, here we have a map which uh, shows the population of, uh, of the Earth. First of all, you could ask if it's good to have a map with the size of the countries and um, putting them in the color uh, compared to their population because smaller countries are always in different color than bigger countries. Just for the reason they are bigger and the size of the, on the map is about, is really linked to the fact of the color here. The other thing is uh, we have this rainbow overview of colors. This is not really good readable for, uh, for people 
If you won't have the legend on the right side, it's hard to say, oh, is, there, is Syria bigger than Kenya or not? Is there more population? You always have to use that. So sometimes it's better to, to just stay monochrome and have a clear uh, scale you're working with. And here's another content issue. This is a map of the German um, football uh, world championship results. And um, the results are transported in the way the country is colored where the match was in. You see, it's already complicated to say what this map shows. Yeah? And it even gets more complicated if you keep in mind there are countries who are doing the World Championship not only once but twice or three times. And to make it even more complicated, uh, when it comes to European scale, there are two countries doing the same championship and one country uh, doing it twice or three times. I had a huge dis uh, discussion with uh, the author doing these maps, just showing that they, they are problematic in a way and it would be better. Maybe this is just the wrong way of, uh, of illustrating that topic. And we, we didn't really come to a result because nobody else cared. And uh, as long as you have uh, two persons, the one is saying that, the other one is saying that, he said, oh, I, will, I have done all the teams, the football teams in Europe, so I will keep on going, uh, doing this. So we need uh, to have, uh, uh, yeah, at least the understanding uh, that quality must be enhanced here too. A better way, which is of course not that nice to look at, but which is a lot more readable, is just this plain graph who shows which is the best result the team reached in which year. Um, the thing I will show you at the end of the talk is about interactive infographics. This uh, takes up what uh, Gordon was talking about. He was more like uh, this animation thing and small interactions. Um, these are infographics who are not on comms yet. These are infographics I did in my professional work. And this is just to give a prospect of where we can go if we are trying to enhance this uh, thing. First thing is um, a wind calculator, which is just a graphic showing the results different wind speeds can have uh, to something. And of course you can do this with a diagram just showing the wind speed and the damage. But with that wind calculator, what you can do is, where's my mouse? You can slow down or speed up the wind and it gets worse. <laughs> no, never. This was done for a German TV station and they refused to let me blow away the house. Yeah. Sorry about that. This is, of course, uh, that's Flash. It's from another era, but it could be done with SVG now as well, but we need JavaScript. There's no way to do such thing without JavaScript. Okay, another example. Um, the weather machine, staying with the weather. Uh, the task here was to do, explain how rain comes to existence, and how snow and hail comes to existence. And um, you have these four factors, which are the temperature in the cloud, the, the wind speed in the cloud, the temperature in the air, and the temperature on the, uh, on the ground. And you can change that. You can say, okay, let's make it a thunderstorm, or let's make it snow. And you see the process of the small drops in the cloud going up, freezing, and falling down as snowflakes. And of course, it's uh, a lot more interesting for a person seeing that than just a text description or even images. But of course, again, we need something to do the interaction with, and that's JavaScript. Another example is, uh, from a technical point of view, is a LCD pixel. And uh, LCD is just shadowing with uh, color lines uh, 
for red, green, and blue, uh, the, the, the different slots in each pixel, and you can move each color blind here, which are these liquid crystals that can be turned. And it's a lot easier to understand than, uh, I think we do have a diagram in the article, but it would be cool just to see. That's the color which results in turning the liquid crystals like that. Okay. Uh, the same can be done with polarization, which is that one, to polarizing filters. You, you can really do experiments if you want to. Or um, this was a job I did for uh, a microphone um, company who had a lot of technical issues to de describe what happens, how waves uh, appear. This is just the animation, but they are of course, there are uh, things like um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, modulation, where you can uh, modulate one wave on the other and see the result, or which is, uh, of course, the microphones themselves. You see the sound coming in. These are highly understandable graphics for the people seeing that. And of course, they do attract um, yeah, readers. Actually, it's about more reading than looking. And um, I would really like it if we in Wikipedia would move towards that. There are a lot of issues to tackle on the way going to that, especially when it comes to somehow we have to handle that with JavaScript. I know it's really a big thing uh, to, to find a way to do that. Um, we have to uh, give graphics more space in our articles. There's no point in having infographics who are just that thumbnail big. So if you have an article on a technical issue, let's say um, this microphone, it should be displayable beside or in a column. Maybe we have to work on our layout to do so, but hey, we are in the 21st century. Oops. Okay. It's complicated, but it's worth it. And I hope I, I spend a little bit of motivation to you to do so. Uh, don't be afraid of the task. You don't have to directly uh, go directly the way to interaction. You can start with just static things. Um, but I think uh, we shouldn't leave that only to the few people who are doing already good work like the person who spoke before me or uh, in German Wikipedia, for example, the Kartenwerkstatt. There are people doing good work. We already have knowledge we can build up on, but uh, we as a project should acknowledge that and um, yeah, see that there are more and more graphic uh, work is involved in the doing especially technical articles. Thank you very much. And of course, we have questions, I guess. Yeah. Um, maybe you said it and I missed it before, but what are your primary offering tools to make these graphics and how um, accessible do you think they are for um, people trying to start out with making these kinds of animations? Um, the offering tools change. Uh, many of the graphics I showed uh, at the end were still in Flash, which is gone. I just show them because uh, in the Flash era we did a lot of this interactive stuff and it took some time for HTML, SVG to catch up to, to get the same possibilities, but now it would be possible to do such stuff in HTML slash SVG. You can do that with a code editor. Of course it would be good uh, to have a, a vector program. A lot of the infographics are vector graphics, so you either need Illustrator or Inkscape or Coral Draw or whatever you like to. There, there are no boundaries for that. If you can code, there actually are no boundaries. You can code it straight away. Um, but of course, we, we need the platform to do so. Um, when it comes to browser support, uh, the browser support for uh, techniques like SVG, the basics, and uh, JavaScript is quite good. 
the browser support for SMIL is bad for the way uh, that Internet Explorer doesn't support it anyway. So that's really a showstopper. Um, JavaScript is really a way to, to get to results without any browser restrictions because JavaScript is supported since years. Um, I wonder if the uh, foundation will ever do such thing like a sandbox graphic viewer or something like that. Yeah, I found your. I found what you were talking about interesting this morning. There was another uh, workshop we had on rethinking the layout of you know Wikipedia pages, and we were you know because you know the the current layout <coughs> is uh, a, rem a relic, I guess you would you could say of when <coughs> everybody was looking at it on desktop. They're at their Wikipedia's on desktops. I couldn't create now, agree today. More. We're using mobile. We're using all sorts of forms. And I think I like what you're thinking about in that we could think about the one thing I says, the infographic or a video itself could be a standalone content that wouldn't necessarily need to be supported to be supporting some other content. Uh, yes, but uh, good infographics, of course, carries the information which are in the article. But it's it's a difference. Uh, it's not just illustrating the article. It, really carries information itself. So it would be good to have it in the context of the article, not to open a new window and being out of everything, but to be inside the article. But what I was saying is they could explain certain aspects of the article all by them without. There are websites that are, that are devoted to putting out, you know, uh, unfortunately not free, you know, infographics on particular subjects that are meant to be standalone infographics to be, to help people out. and. I don't see why we can't do that on our content, with our content. Yeah, um, but actually I would prefer having like a standard procedure. Uh, what what uh, Gordon did with that link to the SVG, that's a workaround uh, around uh, something MediaWiki obviously isn't able to do. To, to get, for example, to get to the SVG version of a graphic, what you have to do now is, to click the thumbnail, to be to open the media viewer, to click more information, end up on comments, and then click full resolution. These are three steps. Nobody does that. Hello, and I'm also a graphic designer and I teach uh, information visualization and uh, each year I ask to my students uh, to create some infographics for Wikipedia. So we, good thing. we found actually lots of the problems that you talked about. And so, for example, the fact that uh, Wikimedia is not really meant for the collaborative creation of images and also the original research problem with infographics. And so, I mean, I see your point. So my question is quite broad. Um, so do you think that there is in the Wikimedia community a debate about this or it's just you? And no, I, I think that many people uh, would appreciate it if there was something like infographics. But it's a bit like the, um, you know, the Columbus Act thing. Yeah, you, you have to have somebody who is doing that and see an article where an infographic is really working out well, and then others start to, ah, we want to have something like that as well. If you go there and say, hey, we want to put pictures into Wikipedia, uh, you have a lot of people saying, oh, we don't we want to be Facebook or something like that. That's evil. Um, but I think we we have to create like a pull effect to bring more and more people into this topic. Where it's working quite well is in the graphic context, uh, in the map context, because a lot of people agree on we need a map on that. This also results in uh, like the world championship maps I showed to you. So uh, often people think of maps first 
before thinking of any other type of infographic. Um, I, I don't really have the solution for it, but I think the more people will work on that and the more people uh, are willing to, to back up people who, who are trying to uh, enhance articles with graphics, the better it gets. Yeah. Battery. Okay, sorry, a second question. Uh, when you have to choose a topic for uh, an infographic on Wikipedia, uh, do you choose among something that you like or is there a list of uh, required infographics or I don't know? Under this ways? is maybe a, a question to give uh, to Gordon because uh, I myself, I really didn't do that many infographics in Wikipedia himself, uh, itself because I'm doing more photos for re relax from work, you know, but Yeah, so if I see an article that lacks um, clarity in terms of explaining uh, something in text, um, I think whether, you know, a, an infographic is more useful. Uh, if it is, then, yeah, I, I draw one if I can. Thanks. Um, I think what also happens often is that you come along an infographic somebody else created, which is not really good or which is old. We have a lot of stuff coming from back 2005 or what also, I didn't mention that, uh, a lot of the infographics we have are infographics coming from companies uh, in some third parties, so not created by Wikipedians themselves. Uh, these are uh, infographics who, of course, have a point of view, and you have to be careful about that, especially when it comes to numbers and sizes, because there, there are heaps of wrong infographics out there, and I sh showed you uh, the way that it's easy to manipulate with infographics. So you have to be careful if there's coming an infographic for free from whoever lobby uh, organization. Uh, since I have the mic, uh, can I ask a question? Okay, actually, this, this touches on me as well. Um, basically, I think we should be aware of uh, needs of, of other users for example, colorblind people. And so when it comes to uh, making maps and all that, we should pick color scales that you know, translate well or have an alternative means of displaying the uh, information for, say, colorblind users. Um, is that something that you would take into account too? Uh, yeah, uh, the, the color blindness aspect is, of course, important when it comes to accessibility uh, and stuff. And therefore, um, it, it's a thing that we um, should work more with, uh, like, um, the English word, different tones than different colors. So with uh, different uh, types of lightness, for example. There are a lot of uh, design rules you can look at. The best thing would be, of course, this is not uh, possible to, to um, hand it that way that everybody sticks to it. But uh, big companies have infographic style guides. So if we would have started like an open infographic style guide where everybody can contribute to, but where all the common mistakes are explained and better solutions are offered, that would be a good starting point, maybe on commons. I think we have finished with the time. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much again.